Samantha Leonardo and Leo at home. And today I am joined by two special guests. Of course, you already know Mr. Talon. Hi. And we also have Victoria from Bad Dog Arts. Hi, Victoria. Bye. Can you tell us a little bit about Bad Dog Arts, what you guys do, what you offer? Well, Bad Dog Arts is a nonprofit. Uh, we're primarily a visual arts organization. Uh, we're local in downtown Salt Lake. We've been around for the last 23 years. Uh, I am one of the uh, co-founders and co-directors of the organization uh, with also Michael Moonberg. And so we started the organization out with the idea that we wanted to create something that we would have wanted to do and attend as kids. So that, that was our initial motivation, but our, uh, one of our primary things is we want to be able to make art available to uh, anyone that wants to access art. So we're, we're really well known for working with kids, uh, but in recent years we've also have added adult programming. So you know, from our perspective, art is for everybody and um, everything and anything is potential art material. So our, um, our mantra is imagine, dare, create. I love that. That is excellent. And I know that I've looked into many of your programs for my young kiddo, but I didn't know that you had adult programming. So I got to go back on and see, see what's available once everything opens back up and we're all running back to normal. Well, we're going to be doing some things uh, for everybody to access on our website. We'll have some things uh, available for, for you to access and uh, play at home. We're just starting to hear from everybody that, gee, I'm, I've read a lot of books and I've done a lot of cleaning. Now I want to do something creative. So we're, we're starting to put some of that together. So stay tuned. Perfect. Well, we are going to get started with a creative piece today. So um, Leonardo da Vinci actually made what we're going to do today um, in the 1480s. He created a single arm and double arm catapult for the army. So to go with our engineering week and Leonardo da Vinci himself, you are going to show us exactly how to make a catapult. Do you want to get started? We'll get started. And we're using really, really simple materials. And so I have the whole list of materials. The, we're we're going to do ours out of popsicle sticks. Now, I don't think that Leonardo da Vinci had popsicle sticks available, um, but that's going to be something that I think a lot of a lot of kids at home will have popsicle sticks. It's something fairly easy to access. I know that uh, I just stopped by the dollar store yesterday to pick some up. And I love using popsicle sticks that are multicolored. So I have these, these beautiful colors. And so we're gonna be using some of the, the regular size popsicle sticks. And then we also have um, the jumbo ones. And these are actually tongue depressors that you sometimes see in a doctor's office. But they're, they're used for crafts and that, and you can get them at a lot of different craft stores around, um, you know, Michael's and Hobby Lobby, and um, a lot of places will, will carry these. So and I, what I would you think? if you don't have popsicle sticks, you can always buy some popsicles at the store and get your kids eaten <laughs> and make some yeah. real fast, right? That would, that would be a tremendous sacrifice to have to eat popsicles to make art out of, wouldn't it? <laughs> They're already pre-dyed, it's perfect. <laughs> you can't swear. So perfect, I do see our materials here and everyone else watching this at home can find all the material list and steps that we're about to do in the comments below. So super easy, let's jump right in. What is our first step? Okay, first step, you're only going to need two of the big popsicle sticks. So Talon, pick your two favorite colors. And I, I really like doing this project where I'm using different colors. So I see Talon has picked a 
a green and a blue one? Yeah. Okay, and are you gonna make one too, Aubrey? Of course, I'm a big kid yep. at heart. <laughs> so so two, two different colors, and so one is going to be a top color, uh, the top one that you're going to decorate and draw on, and I usually do that with whatever the lighter color is. Um, of course, the green and blue, they're kind of both pretty close to the same. Um, but the first thing, before you get, get to make your catapult a piece of art, and with Bad Dog Arts, we always like to have an artistic element to be able to make whatever you're doing, make, make it beautiful. You know, that this is going to serve a certain kind of function, but making it look cool is important also. So with your list of materials, we have um, a ruler and a pencil to start out with. So get your ruler and your pencil. And most rulers will have the inches side of the ruler and the millimeter side of the ruler. The millimeter side of the ruler, what you're going to do is measure down just one and a half centimeter, or one and a half, yeah, centimeters. So on that centimeter side, you're gonna go to the one and then just a little bit further and make a little mark with your pencil across. All right, we did it. <laughs> then turn it where you can make a straight line that goes all the way across your stick. All right, do you wanna make the line for me, Talon? I'll hold this right. and you make, just make the line across. Like a pro. Next one. Okay. Now this is the hardest part of this project. This is the most challenging piece. So getting a pair of scissors, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little notch with our scissors on the outside of that line on either side. And just make sure you're not using your mom's best fabric scissors. So if you even have kind of a utility pair of kitchen scissors, that works well. But it doesn't really, you're not gonna go very far. Just enough to make a little bit of a notch on each side of that line. So just cutting, cutting that in. And then you'll want to do the same thing on your other color. But my blue one already has it. Okay. We might have already prepped a few things, but the green one didn't have it and the blue one did. So we are golden. Here, let me help. This might be the one part that you might need a parent to help you out, huh? Yeah, th this is the trickiest part of this whole project is just making those little notches and my magic is going to show in front of the camera. Can you, Aubrey, can you see that? My little yeah. notches that I just made now? I can, I love your magic and I can see the notches, perfect. So the, the reason that we have the notches that's going to help us to hold it together so our rubber bands don't slip off. We are ready for the next step. Okay, the next step is to make your stick beautiful. So I love using patterns and geometric designs when I'm doing art. So you can draw on your your stick, the one that is going to be the outside that shows the most. So pick which color that you want to draw on. And if you 
if you just draw some simple things, some simple lines, maybe lines or dots. I'm just doing some some connect, connecting X's going across. Well, and I, what I love about this is it really is an exploration into contrasting colors too, right? Because I picked a yellow popsicle stick. So now to make sure my colors are showing up, I'm going to the opposite side of the color wheel. So I'm going more for blues and purples and those kind of things, because if I did oranges and reds, it might blend in. So it's kind of fun to see the different um, colors, but then even when I'm putting things on my popsicle stick, it's changing the color a little bit. So it has a little bit of color theory in this exercise as well. It does. So if you have a, a popsicle stick that's yellow and you draw on it with blue, it'll kind of sometimes turn a little bit greenish. That's right. So, so I have Sharpie markers. I love working with Sharpies a lot. And so I'm just gonna start by defining some of my lines with a black Sharpie and then coloring in other areas. And you can make these designs as, as detailed or as simple as you like. Okay, I think Kat and I have ours done. There's my designs. Do you want to show your designs? Mine just coloring and <laughs> They are still cool. They're just different. Yours are like Jackson Pollock abstract inspired. Okay, we're ready for the next step. <laughs> okay. So your next step is going to be Pulling out, pull out your small popsicle sticks. Now your small popsicle sticks, you're going to need to have eight of them. Ooh. And so what I like to do, if I have colored popsicle sticks available, now if you don't have colored ones, if you just have the plain brown ones, you might want to color some with your markers. That's kind of fun to do. You could even dip them in something like food coloring. That's, that's another fun way to color popsicle sticks. So I have all these beautiful colored popsicle sticks and I'm going to pick out two different colors. I think I want to use today, reds and yellows. Now you need four of each color. If you're gonna do two colors, I have four yellows here and I have four reds. And think about, so we always think artistically. So think about how can you make a pattern with your sticks? So even just alternating, alternating your colors. So I've got a red, a yellow, red and yellow, and stacking them up. So you're gonna stack them in a way that you have them Right, so what Victoria was saying is you can do a pattern, green, blue, green, blue, or you can just stack them all colors together and do some color blocking. You could do a rainbow effect and do all different colors. Um, there's so many options, but which one were you gonna do, the pattern way? Yeah. Perfect. I like patterns. Okay, and same thing with rubber bands. I happen to have colored rubber bands on hand. So I have, I have some red rubber bands, I have some yellow rubber bands, and I have some blue rubber bands. And on your instructions, you're going to see that what we need is two regular size rubber bands and two, or no, one small one. Do you want the blue one or the red rubber band? Blue. Perfect. So I'm gonna use red on mine and you wanna line them up carefully, hold them nice and tight, and then just wrap the end 
very snug and securely. So just wrap, 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 wrap. Keep wrapping. Got to be pretty tight there, buddy. Yep, really nice and tight. So it, it holds together and not gonna fly apart. All right, I'm gonna get town started here. I have a little bit more practice with rubber bands because of my hair. So <laughs> I'm gonna get him started and then he's gonna tighten it up, right? Did you get it on both sides? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna get the other side on mine and so now you need a tiny, one of the smaller rubber bands and, and it's okay if you don't have different sizes. You'll just have to wrap a few extra times. So with your, with your sticks that you have notched, mm -hmm. on the notched end, Take your small rubber band and wrap it right around where those notches are. Does this need to be tight or pretty loose? You want to make it pretty tight, but not so tight that you're breaking the rubber band, but you want to make it nice and tight so that it holds together and won't fly apart. Perfect. I think if you do two rounds like you had it, I think that's perfect. Yep, you got it. Sorry, I'm small rubber bands. <laughs> Hard to get your fingers in there. Yeah. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Good job. Oh, did you see her? Yes. Okay, the next step is kind of tricky also. So you have, I have my, my decorated side of my thick popsicle sticks, and then I have my plain side. The plain side is the one that I want to wedge, and if you count all of your sticks, and from one until eight, number, seven and eight, the bottom two, and this is sometimes kind of tricky to pull those apart and just mm -hmm. kind of wedge through your bottom stick. I have an idea. I'm going to remove one side of my, watch out, watch your fingers. I'm going to remove one side of my rubber bands. That's an option. So if it if it's a little bit too hard to wedge your piece in there with your rubber bands on, if you take one side off and slide that piece in, then put the outside back on, that's another way to do it. Yeah. I think that's a little safer than trying to wedge scissors into it, which was my original plan. <laughs> yeah, and I, I have a, you know, a pretty good thumbnail that I usually kind of am able to wedge it open with my nail, um, but not everybody has fingernails that you can do that with. So, so what you can, what you can notice is that this will slide up and down um, and it will create what's called a fulcrum. Perfect, I think you got it. All right, we've got this step done. Okay, and your very, very last step is going to be Find your bottle cap, that was one of the things on your list, and 
plastic bottle caps I think work really nice although I do have one that I made with a, um, a metal uh, type of bottle cap so that that's an option and being an artist I really like to color coordinate things so I love how this is going to look with the red top on it. Talon just said, oh my gosh, is this what's holding our catapult item? This is so cool. So he is very excited about this step. <laughs> so using a little bit of hot glue, just on that very end with your bottle cap. And this is a step that you may need some help with a parent to use hot glue guns. In our studio, we don't let kids use hot glue guns. It's always our teachers or our art assistants that use the hot glue guns. Alan is itching to go. He understands where the ball goes, but now we just have to attach it to our other piece. So we actually have a true catapult, right? That's right. So, oh, <laughs> he's already testing it out, but I don't think we have it quite turned the right way. Let's listen to Miss Victoria and see what our last step is. So the last step is to figure out what it is you're going to be using to propel with the, the force of your catapult. And we have, since I did this Victoria, Victoria, can we step back one second? We didn't attach this piece to our piece yet. Oh yeah. So can you tell us how to attach our top piece to our bottom piece really quick? With a small rubber band, attaching the two large pieces together. Um, both large pieces have the little wedges on the side. Yes. Okay, so let's put those two together first with your rubber band to make sure that's nice and tight. Okay. So you should have something that looks like this. Perfect. Okay, so you have two of the large popsicle sticks together. I'll hold while you put it on. And then you're going to wedge it through this bottom section. Only the bottom gets wedged through. Gotcha. So whether you're going to try to pry it apart and wedge it or completely take off the rubber band off of one end and slide it through, slide only the bottom part through. Then you can reattach your rubber band on the outside and make sure it's really nice and tight and secure. Okay. Catapult. <laughs> I think we did it. So we have a structure that kind of looks like That's a catapult. This. That's, that's perfect. That's just exactly what you're after. So, so you have, so there's, there's mine. Alan, yours looks perfect and it's all blue and green, your two favorite colors. And it looks great. So are you ready to see what kinds of materials we can put in the top and launch? Yes. Now, I'll just point out one thing, where you have your stack of popsicle sticks, if you have it slid way out to the end, whatever you put in there, it's not gonna go very far. So if you slide that closer and closer and get more tension, then, then you're going to be able to have whatever you put in there actually able mm -hmm. with tension and Perfect. Talon just tested his. He felt like it was a little loose. So we're just doing that rubber band one more time. A little bit of a trial and error here. The scientific method, right? That's right. Make sure that that rubber band's in there tight. Perfect. So we That's have a, fun... a nice spring to it. And, and what you're going to have to do is 
hold, hold the base down with your fingers and just see that that springs back. And it's that spring action uh, that will allow you to put something in there and let it let it spring and see, see where it goes. Now, when I did this with a school group, uh, we wanted it to be really, really safe for everybody. So we just used little, little pom-poms. Now, I would challenge all the kids making these to use different things. I saw that go clear off screen. That, that went pretty far. I think Talon impressed himself. Yeah. Oh, the Nerf ball works great. It went a good five feet before it hit a wall. Cool. The other good. thing I've seen people use is get a little piece of, of tin foil and just roll it up in a ball uh, and maybe even just uh, paper, a really, you know, tightly rolled piece of paper could could possibly work. But that's so fun. That's so fun. Is this going to be the thing you are doing all day long now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's super fun to make these and it's super easy. But I think the really fun part is to see what you can do with it. And I would challenge kids that make these to create your own games and you could do things like you know fling that object into maybe a bowl so raise your mom's tupperware and go outside in the backyard and see if you can fling little objects and let have it land into a bowl i bet you could make a game and put different values on those bowls and have fun with whoever is at home with you. Since we're all social distancing, maybe if you've got a sibling that each one of you can make a cool catapult. And of course you've decorated it yourself so you can tell which one's yours. And then you can make up fun games. And oh. I am so interested to find out what kind of fun games that listeners at home can come up with and and post them and show us what your projects are. Absolutely. We would love to see everyone's awesome projects, all the targets that are made. Um, we were thinking even we could go with some sidewalk chalk and some water and put some water in the caps, shoot water at each other, might help us cool down. But Talon actually made something for us today to kind of play with. We are going to reveal it now for you, Victoria. Cool. Ready? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> There we go. A target. So we are getting our ammo that we've already shot everywhere. And we're going to try to see what we get on the target. And we can have different point values. Um, point values. Yep, he wrote them here. It could be different prizes or snacks that kiddos get. We even talked about, I know, Talon's a Fortnite player, so if we drew the Fortnite map and then he shot the cannon, he would have to go play wherever it told him to go play. That's awesome, wow. I love it. Talon, are we ready to try and hit our target? Heck yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go first. We're gonna see how this goes. Oh, 30 points. Okay, let me try. We'll go for that 2,000 with it. All right. Oh, so close. I, I really think this might be our afternoon. The rest of the afternoon, we will be doing this and adding up points and seeing who wins. Well, yep, I... That? I'll bet you can come up with all kinds of different ways to use these fun catapults. Perfect. Well, we want to say thank you so much, Victoria, for joining us today. We appreciate Bad Dog Arts always being an amazing partner with the Leonardo. And we had Comcast Business, um, or dang it. Oh, I got to redo that. Sorry, one second. Comcast Internet Essentials. Okay. We're starting over there. <laughs> okay. So, so you, you can edit out little bits of this then. Yep. Okay. Yep, so anything we mess up like that, our editor will just watch and like shorten it up and just do a cut. Super simple. Cool. Okay, Talon, why don't you come over here? Yes, you're I know. All right. 
Okay, maybe what I'll do is I'll say final thoughts from Talon, what's your review, and you can tell people, and then I'll say thank you. Oh Trying to hit himself in the face. <laughs> okay, hey, are you listening? Do you understand what I'm gonna do? Okay, all right. So Talon, give us your final review. What are your final thoughts? 10 out of 10. Having um, fun? Yeah, we can make a lot of games out of this. Are you excited to go play with your little brother and see what you guys can do? Mm -hmm. Great. Well, on, part scale of, on a scale of one to 10, what, what, what ten. would you rate it? I already said 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10, you got the kid vote. So thank you so much for joining us, Victoria. We so appreciate Bad Dog Arts. And we also had Comcast Internet Essentials with us today um, and just rounding out Engineering Week. So thank you again. We got, we'll see you guys all next week and have a great and safe weekend.